In this video, we are going to look at an acid-catalyzed epoxide ring opening reaction. This is an epoxide, and epoxide is a three-membered cyclic ether. In this reaction, we're gonna be using an acid, which I'm abbreviating HA, that's just my generic notation for an acid, and you can see that the epoxide is getting opened up so the two carbon atoms of the epoxide end up over here as the product. Here's the oxygen of the epoxide. The A part of the acid gets added to the epoxide. The whole entire acid molecule isn't being added necessarily, just this A. So here are the five most common acids that you will see being used in this reaction. Hydrochloric, hydrobromic, and hydroiodic acid. In these reactions, this is the A. So if we have HCl over here, this is going to be a chloride down here or a bromide or an iodide ion. We can also see this reaction being done with an alcohol. In that case, OR is your A. So if we're doing this with an alcohol, we would end up with the OR group down here or with water. And in this case, the OH group is the A in this reaction. So OH ends up down here. If you're using either an alcohol or water, you're going to see this reagent combined with some acid, H+. It's usually going to be written down underneath the arrow. That acid is necessary to help the reaction along. Let's take a look at the mechanism for this reaction. I've got this particular epoxide that we're going to use as an example. And we we are using an alcohol as our ring opening reagent. We've got a little bit of acid present for that. So this mechanism starts by protonation of the epoxide's oxygen, and that protonation is going to be done with the H+. Plus that comes along with our acid or the water. If you're using HCl, HBr, or HI, the initial protonation is going to be done with the hydrogen of that particular acid. So the very first step that happens, all that we are doing here is just protonating that oxygen, not changing anything else. And this should kind of remind you of SN1, SN2 reactions where we were trying to protonate like a bad leaving group to turn it into a better leaving group. Once we get the epoxide protonated, we are then ready to use the acid, um, the molecule, in this case the alcohol, to actually attack and open the ring. In this case, um, we're going to be doing the attack with lone pair of electrons on the oxygen from the alcohol. If we had water, it would be the same thing. We'd be using lone pair of electrons on the oxygen. If we were using HCl, HBr, or HI, we would be using the chloride ion or the bromide ion or the iodide ion for this next step. When it's time to attack, we have to decide which carbon of the epoxide is going to get attacked. So we already know that we're going to be attacking with the oxygen of the, of the alcohol. Are we going to attack at this carbon or are we going to attack over here? The, the um, position or the placement of the attack in this reaction is a little bit funny. So in terms of attacking, the acid attacks in the ring a tertiary carbon first. If there is a tertiary carbon in this ring, that's the carbon that is going to get attacked. Um, and that would be a tertiary carbon would be one that has zero hydrogens on it. We do not have a tertiary carbon. We have uh, two hydrogens on one of our carbons and one hydrogen on the other. And so that means that our acid is not gonna attack this guy. If there isn't a tertiary carbon to attack, then it attacks a primary carbon. So its second choice would be a primary carbon, and this is one that has two hydrogens. We have a primary carbon, this guy right here, so that's where we're going to be doing our attacking. Its third choice, its last choice, would be a secondary carbon, so we'll make a note of that as well, a secondary carbon, which is one that has zero hydrogens. That is the last choice for attack. So let's draw that, and while we're drawing that, let's talk a little bit about why it works this way, because that this is very bizarre. You know, we haven't really ever seen anything that has a weird trend like that. Let's attack, draw this. So the theory that chemists have 
is that if there's a tertiary carbon present in the molecule, then the ring opening, like the ring starts to break open prior to attack. And based on this theory, the idea is that the ring is going to break open in such a way that creates the most stable carbocation, which you know is a tertiary carbocation. If there isn't um, a tertiary carbocation present, then this reaction behaves more like an SN1 or SN2 reaction where it goes after the least sterically hindered carbons instead. So that's, but like I said, that's just the explanation. This is kind of a mystery in chemistry. So let's draw these products. We get, um, first of all, we're breaking this carbon oxygen bond. So I've broken the bond there. We have done nothing to this carbon. So no change to that. And we have added our alcohol. The position of attachment is the oxygen. So the oxygen has added itself to the carbon and we get this molecule right here. And it is uh, positively charged for now. All that we have to do, this should look pretty familiar to you. We've seen things that look like this in our SN1 and SN2 reactions. All that we have to do next is just simply deprotonate this, this guy right here. We could do that with a second CH3OH molecule. We could do it with a water molecule. There's just about anything we could use for that. Oxygen lone pair of electrons are going to grab the hydrogen and break that bond to give us this molecule right here. I almost forgot that that's an ethyl group. So there's the product of this reaction. One last thing that I want to note on here for this particular reaction, no matter where the acid attacks, no matter what type of carbon gets attacked, the stereochemistry always inverts. Now for this particular example, the carbon that we were attacking, the carbon that got attacked in this reaction is not chiral. It wasn't chiral and it did not become chiral. So we didn't have to worry at all about inversion of stereochemistry, but that will not always be the case. So you got to keep in mind the carbon atom that you're attacking, the stereochemistry is always going to invert.